I figured with this being my first swim during Pride that I should start off with a reminder that there's no room for turfs on my turf. I'll admit that I haven't spent enough of the segment focused on the slights against trans women, and I'm going to make an effort to rectify that going forward because we're all in this together. And with the SCOTUS this hostile to women's rights and trans rights, that's never been truer. So in keeping with that goal, my first story this week is about a bigoted jackass named Andrew Chesney. Chesney is a Republican state representative in Illinois, and he went on a tirade on the Senate floor the other day arguing for independently drawn district maps, which is normally a good thing. But he's a Republican, so he wanted to do it because bigotry, specifically because of trans-affirming legislation from the state's Democratic majority. So yeah, in the midst of a still raging pandemic with a volatile economy and rising consumer prices, this motherfucker's biggest concern is tampon dispensers in men's bathrooms. Quote, how the hell do we get tampons in male bathrooms? And just a little diversion here, huge red flag where people start cramming male and female into phrases where most people just say man or woman. Male bathrooms? (sighs) Anyway, continuing. Quote, how does that happen? That's because you don't have an independent map. Sex education today just passed with 60 votes. It's like a mini HBO porno. How does this happen? It's because you don't have independent maps. End quote. Okay, so much wrong in that quote. So sorry if the first thing I pluck out is trivial, but um, a mini HBO porno? When the fuck are you from, dude? And what makes sex ed like a mini HBO porno? Why, the fact that it's LGBTQ confirming? That's it. It's not like they're wheeling in the projector and playing Circe's walk of shame scene for the kiddos or anything. The fact that the new sex ed standards acknowledge the existence of non-hetero, non-cis people is enough to make it pornographic in this asshole's mind. Also, what is he afraid those tampons in the men's room are gonna do? Like, what possible threat could they pose to him? I mean, I'm Sure, making a robotic attack tampon to sneak into a public restroom with Andrew Chesney would be a difficult task. But for any budding engineers in the audience, I want to assure you that it would be worth it. Anyway, so yeah, that guy sucks. But I don't want to just leave you with bad stuff, so I have a rare good news story to toss in before I go. Joe Biden followed through with his campaign promise to omit the Hyde Amendment from his budget proposal. Quick reminder, that's the amendment that forbids federal tax dollars from directly funding abortions. And while Biden did say he was going to do it, there was some question about whether he was too centrist or too Catholic to follow through. And he did. So to be clear, nothing's really happened that wasn't symbolic. It'll probably show back up in budget negotiations and getting rid of it would require the approval of Congress one way or the other. But the more hostile the judicial branch gets to women's rights, the more important it is to get positive signals from the executive branch. And on that fleeting glimmer of ephemeral hope, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.